Okay, so uh, I want to do some decorating today. So, ooh, um, yeah, let's get a little more seasonal. Perfect. My little 2004 emo heart is very happy. So, that being done, and now that you can't see all the dirt under my fingernails, today we are doing stuff with dried flowers in this muted color palette. We're gonna make a fall harvest floral witch with these colors. Um, and that one I'm really excited about. I think that's going to take me a little while to do. So, that being said, let's get started. I'm going to start with figuring out what color ribbon I want to use on the styrofoam. Um, I've got some options here, and I've got like some hemp, some black, I have some pink lace. And so I'm just pulling out the different flowers to see which color I like best and which is going to work. Um, without detracting from the two colors and I kind of like the black with the natural hemp edge to it I think the hemp with the black on the other hand is just a little too me like it's too close in color tone to the rest of the flowers that it's just going to dull everything out and I prefer I like high contrast so I decided to go with the black instead so I'm gonna start with it had this weird like bow thing like made on one end so I just cut that off um, and then trying to figure out how to wrap the ribbon around this was really really hard I don't know why I struggled with it so much I think I probably should have taken the ribbon completely off the spool and it would have made my life a lot easier but I don't do things the easy way ever so I just put a layer a little string of hot glue tapped the ribbon down and it was really hard to not burn myself on the hot glue because the ribbon itself was porous and the hot glue kept like going through it so I had to like kind of rest stuff on it and then let it cool a little bit and I keep putting my hand in the way <laughs> this whole video like my camera kept zooming in randomly and so my hand would be in the way or I would just be dumb and put my hand in the way so I wrapped the ribbon a couple of times and then I would put a little bit of hot glue and wrap it again and just to help keep it tight so that it would make like a, a good solid layer to cover all the white. I didn't really need it to be super tight, just enough that it wouldn't buckle or bow um, anywhere. And it does a little bit, but not enough I think that is distracting. So it turned out pretty cool. It almost reminds me of like a, like a spine. There, figuring out my camera had zoomed in. Um, or like the drawings of like cornucopia things. So now I'm just grabbing the flowers and some wire cutters and cutting them down to the right size. <laughs> and you can see me kind of debate on whether I'm going to cut them like right up next to the top of the flower or if I'm going to give a little bit of stem. And I didn't know at this point how I was going to arrange them. So I didn't know if I would need the stem or not. So I cut them all with the stem a little longer. And then was like, well, I can adjust later. It'll be fine. So cutting all of those and getting on to the next ones. Just get out of here, tag. Don't need you. Um, moving on to the, to the leaves, actually. Um, these ones I cut a little bit different. So I wanted to have some different lengths and different varieties of sizes there for just some different um, visual textures and interest. So I cut them all close to the main stem so that there would be enough length to play with so that I could angle them out if I need to. So cut them all, get rid of the stem, don't need it. And then same thing with the light um, pinky dusty ones as well. Just cutting all of those about the same length as I cut the darker ones. And big huge pile of flowers, just getting rid of the tags and, um, and then we'll get on to gluing things. flowers piles all right so moving on I started with the leaves because I wanted those in the back in the background 
Um, so just figuring out kind of how I want to layer them, how I want to angle them, where I want them to be, and just kind of playing with the wire, getting it kind of separated a little bit and figuring that out. And then hot glue, again, is my best friend. And just kind of layering, starting from the top. And dabs of hot glue kept falling on the leaves. My hot glue gun is probably 15 years old. And it's not a fancy one. I think I got it for like $5 or something like that. And it leaks. So it just, like, you can see the beads of hot glue on my desk. Um, so once I got a good base layer of leaves down, I decided to put, um, start with the darker ones. So building from like a light background to darker mid-tones. I didn't want to have um, the light against the light so that there would be some visual differentiation between the two and then cutting those stems off because I didn't need them and they were just going to be poking out every which way so then because I want to do this as like a half design I decided to jump down to the bottom before I got too into it so that I could make sure it was balanced it's not going to be 100% symmetrical but I wanted it to have some visual balance I didn't want it to be heavier on one side or the other so I would build a little bit on the top and then switch down and build some on the bottom. And then just cutting the stems so they didn't overhang too far. And then I decided to add a third stem at kind of an angle off to the side. So I needed to mimic that on the top before I got too far along because it's really hard with these petals of these flowers to get the stems underneath them because they tend to want to get in the way and they stick to the glue. Um, so I wanted to get that in there before I got too far along. So then, like I said, switching to the bottom and putting my two purple flowers on the bottom or mauve. I think it's mauve. I don't, I don't know anymore. Um, and then going in with the light colors and building them kind of, I didn't want everything to be like pairs of stuff, like, but it did end up pretty even numbers of things because it just looked better that way but I didn't want it to be like obvious that I was like two of these and then two of those and then two of these and I wanted everything to kind of look a little balanced but not matchy I'm sorry if you can hear it my dog is chewing on a bone in the background and I don't want to stop him because he's being really whiny today and this is keeping him from being whiny so I'm just gonna let him keep chewing so like I said, kind of building up symmetry, I've got two of each color for the moment on the one on the two on the top and two on the bottom. And then going back in with some more dark ones to kind of fill the edges because the flower I'm going to put in the middle is going to be um, not as saturated. It's um, well, I guess it's a saturated color, but it's not as dark of a value. So then we've got how it looked in the end, put the flower in the middle, this nice kind of dusty orange rose and we've got a wreath and I'm really happy with how it turned out I think it looks pretty good it's definitely what I was going for it's got a good semicircle shape okay so now this is the bigger project I started with three pieces of styrofoam that I just had from a box of some sort I can't remember and I had cut them down a little bit to size before I started filming just to get the size of what I wanted um, adding in some hot glue and then pressing it all down together. So the good thing about using hot glue and styrofoam is that the hot glue kind of melts the styrofoam a little bit and so you get a really strong bond that way. And this isn't like, it's a slightly different styrofoam. It's not like straight up styrofoam. I, I don't know, it's a packing foam. I guess you call it like sty polystyrene maybe is what they call it. Like the, it's more like a building foam. Um, so I kind of cut it to where it had some rounded edges and tried to balance it a little bit so that one side wasn't too much bigger than the other. And I had to glue some pieces back on to get it to the shape that I wanted. And once it was roughly the shape I wanted, I wanted to soften out those edges. So I grabbed some stuffing from an old pillow that I had that just needed to be replaced. And so I've been using the stuffing for <laughs> random projects um, and then just hot gluing that down because it gives it a decent enough hold. It's going to have some fabric over the top. So going all the way around and making a good thin layer of the pillow foam, which I think is polyfill basically. Um, turning it just to see if I'm getting bald patches. And I did have one that came that the glue didn't stick. So just kind of sticking that back on. So now I'm going to make a body for it, like a cover for it. So I've just taken some um, 
some stretch material. I think it's like 70% polyester or 80% polyester, 20% spandex or something like that. It's just a, I found it in the remnants bin and I'm just basically stitching a tube. So just making a straight, um, I folded it so that it would fit over kind of like a sock. And then I'm just going to cut the excess off because I cut it as straight as, so stitched it as straight as possible. And then just cut the excess off so that I can have a good clean line when I turn it the other way. So I'd put the two sides of the fabric that were going to be the outside together and then stitched them. Um, what you would call right sides together. And then just pulling it over the shape that I made. Just like a sock. So it's going to give it kind of like a stretch. It, it's a stretchy material so that way I could pull it down. I could tighten it over and kind of keep the shapes a little rounder better than I could with 100% cotton. So just making sure that it still looks the way I want it to and that I've got enough fabric. I cut it longer, cut the fabric longer than I needed to so that I'd have plenty of extra just in case. And then rearranging the, the foam, the polyfill inside um, to make sure everything's roughly where it needs to be. And then move everything out of the way so I could see better. And then I'm just going to glue the fabric to the bottom because this isn't going to be something that's going to have a lot of wear and tear on it. It's going to be pretty much set in one place and stayed there. So I can just hot glue it to the bottom to keep the bottom nice and flat. So after I've got the big pieces hot glued, I'm pulling the smaller pieces of fabric over so that it has a, a more of like a pleats ish type look where it looks like a pulled dress or something and then making sure it sits flat as flat as possible in all these hot glue strands and I want to say I got this hot glue at the dollar store because I ran out of my good stuff and I just was like oh let me see if the dollar store has hot glue and this stuff is legit it works pretty well for like dollar store hot glue it's pretty impressed so then I'm doing the same thing with the top but before I do I'm just kind of packing in some more polyfill, making sure that everything still has a good rounded shape. And then I did pin the top a little bit because the top was giving me problems because I had made that I'd left the top kind of rounded. And so I just pinned it on top of the glue as well, just to make sure that everything really stayed in. So then I took this piece of felt and I'm just kind of cutting it into a semi oval shape. This is going to make a hat, uh, like a hat brim. So I'm just kind of putting it on the top in the center so that it looks like a hat brim and I'm just going to hot glue that down as well and now I'm going to make the nose and I went back and forth on a couple of ways how I wanted to do this so I got these little ping pong ball size styrofoam balls and I decided to spread some Mod Podge on it to get rid of the texture because I was originally just going to leave it bald but you'll see what I decided to do anyway and then this is going to make her hair this is just a bunch of um, faux fur that I got at Michael's just a strip and I've cut it into some good Lydia Dietz goth bangs that I'm going to hot glue on. Because Lydia Dietz is our goth queen. So there's her little goth 90s girl bangs. And then I'm going to give her some like edges to her bangs. So like I'm a 90s kid. I was born in the late 80s. I grew up in the 90s. I remember goth kids having like the slightly longer off cut bangs that like set in front of their ears like it was very 90s goth um and then I've given her some longer edges on the side and I'm trying to decide if I want to like pull them into a ponytail but what I decided to do was I turned the fabric over and I cut just the felting on the back of the of the faux fur so that I didn't make a straight edge of the fur and the fur could still stay sa shaggy so it was kind of hard to do to make sure that I only cut the felt but you can kind of see here where I've just like trimmed it and that's given me that nice natural edge to um to the hair there so here's what I decided to do with the nose I let the Mod Podge dry decided I didn't like it um that's my little nose stand so I tried this mesh I had I didn't like that but I did have some cheesecloth which happens to be a good pale skin tone so I covered that around the styrofoam ball and just stretched it as thin as I could to make her a little nose. And this is where I kind of started losing my mind a little bit. <laughs> so she's got a dress now. <laughs> I grabbed some lace off camera and I cut it so that it would fit around the shape. 
and I just left it rough cut and then I just stitched it to that stretchy fabric. So onto the hat I painted, I wanted to paint the cone so that just in case any of the cone showed through it wouldn't be that bright green, I wanted it to be black and have a good background. So I cut the flowers again longer because this time I am going to shove the wire into the cone. And so I cut the flowers and I also cut, you'll see in my pile of stuff, some of the leaves just so that I would have some greenery to fill in if I needed to. Um, so those are all cut and I just had the need to give her a little flower piece for her eyes. I don't know why, like next, like as if she's just, while she's made her hat, she's like shoved some flowers in her hair. Uh, this was on about hour six of me making this and I was just like six hours straight and I was just kind of starting to like lose it I think so <laughs> the cone took forever to dry I had to go blow dry it because of the combination of how thick I used the paint the paint and the material I was painting on it just did not want to dry so here you can see this is the reason why I left the leaves is so I could fill in some space and I kept going back and forth on whether I got enough flowers and it turned out I just barely got enough as long as I used some of the leaves too. So I'm glad I did that. And I decided to make the base of the, um, the cone all yellow flowers because I just really liked the look of that. And then I kind of blotted in the red ones and then filled in the rest with the daisies and then added in the red as needed as well as some greenery. And I think it turned out it looks pretty full. Um, I was pretty happy with it. These were like really cheap fake flowers and I'm happy with how well, how good they look on here and how well they worked. Um, so just kind of building up and continuing to make sure that there's not too much of one color next to each other because I wanted that look on the bottom but not necessarily everywhere else. Though the little yellow flowers were perfect size for the top of the cone and there really wouldn't have worked to put the larger ones up that close to the top. And then I decided to put two of the leaves in the very top of the cone. Um, and I think that works well for the top of a hat. So it's like a witch's cone, like the cone hat with the brim, where it's like a wizard hat, but bigger. And it looks, it's, I think it turned out pretty cute. Okay, so projects are done. Um, I'm very pleased with them. So. Here is the wreath that turned out pretty nice and I think it's going to look great on this wall. I've just got to figure out where I'm going to put it because I've got a vanity I'm redoing that's going to go here. So I mean this space will be changing but I think this will be a really nice um, addition. Don't mind holding that, thank you pal. And. This took me maybe 25-30 minutes. The hardest part was like wrapping the ribbon and figuring out like how to get it to stay. And it's not perfect, but I'm happy with it. This little lady, she took me almost an entire day. <laughs> so um, in honor of how much effort went into her, I have put um, the same fabric on the desk. Hi, Hugan, did you come to say hi? Pardon the dog interruption. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, anyway, so she took forever. Uh, like, literally, uh, it was so difficult, but I'm so happy with how she turned out, and I think she's super adorable, and I like her little dress <laughs> a lot. Um, definitely a style icon. I think I'm gonna maybe name her, I've been wanting to call her Agatha. I think it's a good witch name. Um, and she's my little fall harvest witch. And I'm so happy with how cute she is. So I hope you enjoyed going through this process with me and um, watching me make some stuff. And I thanks so much for hanging out with me and I will see you next Friday.